I remember talking to a couple. Uh, one man in our church had called me and said, I think you're going to get a call from, from a man that's uh, one of my best friends. I've worked with him for years. And uh, I know that, that he and his wife's marriage, in their mind, it's over. And they, uh, they're ready to contact lawyers. They're ready to call it quits. He said, but today at work, I just made one last plea with him. I said, would you be willing to go talk to our pastor? And this man said, sure, I'll, I'll, be, I'll do anything. But he really kind of thought he was just kind of checking the box. And so I do get a call from this gentleman. John is his name. And John and his wife came. I said, meet me tonight in my office at 7 o'clock. So they did come to the church. They met me at 7 o'clock. And to make a long story short, they had all kinds of problems in their marriage, all kinds of things that happened, all kinds of things that are not good things at all. But that first night, instead of talking about all those things, I said, I do want you to know God gives you hope for all the things that trouble you. But there's something that troubles you there's, that you may not even know so much, and that is your life, your soul, in relationship to God. Because the greatest problem you have right now is not a bad marriage. The greatest problem you have right now is the fear of dying in your sins and going to hell forever. That's your biggest need. That's what you need to have addressed. So I had the opportunity to open the scriptures and to share with them step by step what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, that Jesus died for their sins, that he would give them new life because he's raised from the dead. And we took about an hour plus and we went through that. They asked a few questions. And, you know, every time you share the gospel, it doesn't, it doesn't always happen like this quick. But both of them that night, they looked at me and they said, we are lost and we want to be saved. So the Bible says, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So right there we bowed and both of them very simply cried out to God, believing in Jesus and asked God to save them. And that was a wonderful thing. So we, we get done praying and I said, all right, now I want you to know that if God can solve your biggest problem, his wrath and eternal judgment, he can certainly solve the problems of your marriage. That's not a big deal to God. And so I said, let's set up some times and let's get together and let's start talking about this. And the wife, she said, I would love to do that. But when I tell you what I do for a living, you won't want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> I said, really? Tell me, what do you do for a living? Now, I'm just saying this, I, I want you to, to, to get several things from this story, but she said this, she said, I am the director of Planned Parenthood here in town, and I know how your church thinks about life and abortion. Now, as I thought about that later, it, this is the blessing that came to me as I thought about that, because here was someone who knew people as their good friends in our church so that they knew what our church thought about life. And yet they still went to these people when they had problems. They still went to talk to these people. And I think, isn't that how all of God's people should be? That people know that we love truth, that we love life, that we embrace truth and life, yet are the kind of people you could come to to talk to when you have needs in your life. So I was so blessed to, to later on think about that. But when she responded that way, I said, look, as long as you are willing to let Jesus be Lord of all of your life, as long as you're willing to let Jesus challenge every view of morality you've ever had, we'll have a wonderful time meeting. She said, it sounds good to me. And these were her words. I've done it my way long enough. <laughs> 